Apart from that, I do not know the specifics. Yes, Geneva, Col Geneva uh, Conventions and the subsequent protections in 74, 75, etc. They are lateral, but Geneva Conventions first, okay. tell us Geneva Conventions, then go to Geneva. Uh, I do not know the specifics of the convention, sir. I only know that Geneva Convention is for uh, refugee protection and... Uh, for? For? Refugee protection, sir. Refugee protection? Yes, sir. The present context in which we are hearing uh, it was Geneva Convention. Uh, I, I do not know about Geneva Convention. I so believe okay. it was about uh, refugee handling of refugees by the international uh, community. 1948. 1948. Uh, no, sir, it's not. Uh, I'm not able to recollect, sir. 1948. It started in 1860s. 1863, 1864, etc. At that time, it started. But the convention actually was signed in 1948, long after. Okay, sir. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll think about it later on. Uh, are you aware of uh, a thing called separation of powers? Yes, sir. What is that? Uh, so, se the doctrine of separation of powers says that the executive, legislative and judiciary should be in a system of checks and balances so that one does not overpower the executive, the legislature and judiciary? Yes, sir. They should be separate? Yes, sir. Why? This is to ensure that no one segment of the governing agency itself can use up all the power and uh, take control over everything, sir. There has to be a system of checks and balances, so one acts as a check to ensure that the other does not dominate over the whole machinery. Do you think in India the legislature and the executive are separate? They are The separate. top executive belongs to the top legislature. Yes, sir. But the executive itself is still responsible for the uh, legislature, sir. That is how the parliamentary system is envisioned in the country, sir. So the executive can take whatever government decisions it wants to take, but without the majority of the legislature, it cannot uh, uh, implement any of those policies, sir. So when we say majority, I understand that uh, the political party with the uh, highest numbers can uh, will always have the legislative uh, majority. But the parliamentary system itself is envisioned in such a way that Individual party members, individual legislators would take a call based on uh, their uh, opinions, philosophies and their regional needs. So we believe that when cumulatively people come together, the overall decision would be for the betterment of the country. Sir. So how, how do you think uh, power can be separated? Power is an abstract thing. It is not a, a tangible thing. Yes. Sir. How can power be separated? So power is wielded in society through the institutions that we create. Sir. So the institutions are through with the system's power or the uh, power that is uh, in the government is built through its institutions. So when institutions have separate responsibilities and institutions have different regulatory agencies and regulatory uh, requirements to, com uh, to comply with, that is where we separate power and make sure nobody overreaches or uh, overreaches or uh, uh, takes over a lot of power that is supposed to be wielded by some other agencies. But don't you think the public interest litigation, yes, sir. Uh, that is, uh, that is that goes against the principle of separation of powers? No, sir. So in a democratic politic, the power itself is uh, emerging out of the people's view. So when I say there is a public interest litigation, with the public form the government. So the public have the right to put up a litigation saying something is not right, if or this problem is not taken care of. It's just a litigation taking it forward to the notice of the government to ensure that any problems in society is getting resolved. So it's not usurping of power by the people, the power itself flows from the people. So if the people do not have the right to make the claim or uh, make the litigation that something is not happening, uh, I do not see it as, uh, uh, as a barrier or as something that is uh, uh, consuming the separation of power doctrine itself. Sir. What in the Bandhuva Mukti Murcha case? I have not heard about it, sir. In public interest litigation, yes, sir. Uh, in that context, you have not heard about this case? Uh, Bandhuva Mukti Morcha, the Bombay Clever case. Uh, no, sir, I have not heard about this, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Uh, when did you start? Last time. Huh? He came last yeah, week. Yeah. There was soil. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sivananda, you have to do a conversation, right? no? Where, where are you working now? I am currently working as a consultant in Samagra Siksha, sir. The renamed version of Sarva Siksha. Sarva Siksha? Yes. Oh, okay. So you have done your computer science engineering? Yes. So many 
So I have some questions. Sure, Tell me about the web three. Uh, so As if you are telling to a layman. Uh, so I am not completely aware of the web three concept itself, sir, because uh, web three, <coughs> metaverse, and blockchain, uh, they are trying to build up a new system uh, of how we interact or network with people. So. Uh, there are lots of technical concepts involved there. I have not gone through the uh, whole sphere of these three components. Uh, so I may not be able to give a better explanation. Okay, about NFTs? Uh, NFTs I have an awareness. So, so, in, so you want me to explain it? Okay, so. so NFTs are non-fungible tokens, which we are saying that anything that is digital can be copied for, a, uh, for any practical purpose. Now when we say it as an NFT, uh, we are saying that this is a unique piece. It cannot be copied. We do this through digital signatures and blockchain technology saying that this is the only unique piece like a premium product or a limited edition and when it says we say it as a limited edition, it gets a premium value. So right now there is a lot of speculation on how NFTs would, uh, as a, would become as an asset class. So because of that there is uh, like lot of celebrities are releasing their own NFTs so that they can capture on the uh, uh, fan market to make uh, a lot of profits. Okay. So, have you read about the taxation of crypto assets? Yes. That has been brought by the Indian government. Yes. So, what what is the tax tax on uh, uh, selling of crypto assets? Uh, it's thirty percent, sir. Thirty percent. And yes. what was the amendment that was brought recently? Uh, with regards to uh. this thirty percent, sir. I I do not know the name of the amendment. That is a specific clause. It was in the news recently. Uh, Okay, so, uh, I, I do not get what you are uh, referring to. It says that the gain, <laughs> the, the loss that, uh, that was uh, made through the selling of a crypto asset cannot be set up against the gain. Ah, yes sir. Okay, so that's the thing. So you worked in Samsung? Yes sir. So which project do you work on? Or any product that you are... I was with? working on 5G research, sir. Okay. I was uh, working on ML based application mm -hmm. for uh, mobility management. Okay, so especially anything specific to Geo or something? 5G no, sir. I was on the research division, sir. Okay, so you worked only in Bangalore or you went to South Korea? I went to South Korea for one month, sir. Okay, so what do, what do you see the difference in culture between uh, India and South Korea? There is a starking difference between uh, Indian culture and South Korean culture, sir. Uh, so, in, so how I would like to present this difference is, uh, uh, the people over there, uh, they are very uh, soft natured and very much rule bound. Going against a rule is equivalent to committing suicide. That's how the whole society itself is, has uh, evolved into. So, you can, th th there is no cases of theft. And if someone steals, the family sees it as a dishonor of the family itself. And that is enough motivation for people to be rule bound and uh, for people to follow the rules. And their level of uh, social growth and uh, economic evolution is a story that we can emulate. Because uh, they also went through a civil war. They were coming from object poverty. And the country has evolved into a developed state. So, so if we want to learn from them, if we want to learn from them, what is the cultural backdrop on which this uh, this thing has developed? So if you want to change in India into a place like that, what exactly has to be changed? I say from a, from the people's point of view, I would really like a behavioral change where uh, we minimize on the abuse of basic civic rules, uh, following lane rules while driving, not spitting on public property. No, that is being done in India. That is not going down in South Korea. Yes, sir. Ah. What exactly is the difference? How do, how you will change it? We can go and tell 100 people, yes, don't do this. But they will be doing. Yes, sir. So this is a cultural change that has to happen. I can uh, relate this to the uh, sorry uh, Swachh Bharat campaign, sir. Uh, open defecating has been an historical practice across India. And now the focus on Swachh Bharat to create open defecation free uh, uh, villages and making sure all these toilets are maintained. At the next phase, we are trying to see if the built toilets are being used and maintained. So this is the cultural change that we are being, bringing for public hygiene and sanitation. Similar uh, campaigns need to be evolved on a pan-Indian scale so that we get that sense of honor, integrity and uh, uh, trust in the societal structure itself. We have all of those in our epics and in our uh, 
way of life, but we don't see it in the society as a collective uh, uh, union of beliefs. Okay, so you are studying computer science and you are from Chennai. Yes, sir. Chennai is now famous for one uh, trend in computer like related things, computer science related things. One industry is booming. Lot of uh, unicorns are being built. You, you Software as a service. Yes, sir. Ah, okay. Okay. Sir. What are the companies? Like some companies that you can name? So there is Zoho, sir. There is uh, Freshwork. Uh, there is Kissflow. Uh, I don't. Uh, we have three any more messages. Okay. Okay. So go this thing. Zoho is based out of Chennai. Uh, you, we can say that it's based out of Chennai, sir, but it's headquartered in Chennai. Sound good. Ah. Okay. Okay, Sivanandam, you are from Chennai, and that too from Gimbi. Yes, sir. Okay, what is the speciality of the Gimbi? Uh, I, I do not know, sir. Gimbi Engineering College and Gimbi Race. Race course. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. So, you are also a computer science graduate. Okay? Yes, sir. Nowadays, a lot of technical graduates are migrating towards this field of technology. Okay? Yes, sir. Becoming these civil services officers. Is it a good trend? Uh, so, I see it as a good trend, sir, because we need more systemic thinking in how the bureaucracy is being run and how the government machinery is being run. So engineers bring with them a style of systemic thinking. So if you can add on the humanities aspect of life. But previously the some 15 to 20 years back, if the trend was not like that. Do you say that the, at that time that the bureaucracy was not so good with the non-engineering graduates? No, sir. Uh, the bureaucracy has always held strong in the country for the last 73 years and even during the British times. So, in that sense, uh, to compare what is, uh, how the bureaucracy was planned 30 years ago and how it is today mm. uh, would be like comparing apples and oranges. The needs of yesterday are different from the needs of today. Uh, so in a sense, I see engineers coming into the service itself in, a, in large numbers is helping with the digital initiatives. Because now we are, so the world itself is moving towards an aggregate model of everything. So you do it in a business concept, you create a startup. It may become a unicorn. Uh, you do it in a government context, it becomes e-governance initiatives. So right now, at least for the next 10 years that I see is that in every industry, we are trying more and more aggregate models where it's a one-stop solution for everything. Okay. So you know about the e-waste. Yes, sir. Okay. How the e-waste can be disposed? So e-waste disposal, uh, there are guidelines, sir. There is this uh, 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 law called uh, E-Waste uh, Management uh, Act. Uh, so we talk E-Waste Management <coughs> Act. Oh, uh, oh, oh, sure, sir. I'm sorry. Uh, so the uh, uh, the rules talk about how e-waste should be disposed mm -hmm. and the care that needs to be taken uh, and how the producer's responsibility is there on uh, on receiving back all the e-waste that is generated so that it can be recycled and reused the uh, uh, valuable components and uh, the uh, toxic components are disposed uh, safely. How? Uh, I, I you just said about the buybacks in that stock. Being a technical graduate, yes, sir. can you tell that what technology can be adopted for the e-waste disposal effectively? Uh, I, I do not know, sir. Then nowadays we are talking about so much about the cyber security and all. So for that the cyber law is also there. Okay, what is the speciality of the cyber law? Then compared to a constitutional law or a labor law and other the other branches of the law. The cyber law and environmental law has got some speciality. What is the speciality? I, I do not know the difference between oh, these types of laws. I will tell you that. Yes. Okay. So in the cyber law, that is you see that in any of the cyber related crimes, that is the first one, uh, the investigation, identification, prosecution and law. So prosecuting and producing before the court of law, what is the big hurdle which is there in the cyber law? Uh, traceability, sir. Hmm? Traceability. Traceability is, uh, with, uh, come on, you just amplify the term traceability. Yes, sir. So, uh, so to prosecute, we need to understand the origin of the uh, crime itself mm. in, in, uh, in, uh, in cyber security or in cyberspace. Uh, we have a problem with tracing the origin of a crime. Uh, you say the uh, hate speeches or uh, uh, political posts or uh, uh, other forms of uh, hacking and phishing uh, activities. 
we have a problem with tracing the origin of these uh, offenses mm -hmm. so we cannot we cannot pinpoint that this is the accused for this offense so this is a part of the investigation okay with the available technology you can be able to identify that who has uh, committed the crime but a yeah, person who is the citizen of x country sitting in the y country and hiring the satellite or cyberspace of the c country and doing a crime which is construed to be an offense under the d country means it and what law he can be prosecuted that is the jurisdictional issue is the most important okay this is what the biggest hurdle in the cyber law okay and you are telling about that uh, about that the parliament and the judiciary and all now parliament is enacting that legislation but tomorrow the judiciary a single judge is striking down that uh, legislation now can you say that judiciary is more uh, powerful than parliament no sir all three uh, agencies are bound by the constitution which mm -hmm. is our supreme court if the supreme court uh, say squashes a uh, 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 squashes a uh, no, act that was passed by the members in the majority they passed all legislation or passed an act in the parliament but that has been struck down by the supreme court the single judge are uh, even in the even the last one they get back that uh, Vishakha was a state of Rajasthan. The court has virtually written section by section the law also. Do you think that judiciary is overriding this parliament or the legislature? No, sir. The judiciary is trying to fill the gap that is being, uh, the gap that is in the legislature. The Vishakha case, the guidelines itself, came up because the Supreme Court wanted a guideline system and it was not present. Because of the urgency of the issue and because of its sensitivity, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court take up, took up the role on itself to give a guidelines, uh, and still it asked the government to. But the guidelines could have been given in the form of a directions, but not in the form of directions. They have virtually written that law itself. That writing that law is the duty of the legislature. Yes, sir. I believe this this could have been done by the Supreme Court judges, uh, taking into account the seriousness and the sensitivity. Sensitiveness of the case itself. Be louder, be louder. Mm -hmm. Little bit louder. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we could see this uh, Vishaka guidelines as the as a case of uh, discretionary power of the SC Supreme Court to ensure that these kind of issues do not happen again in the country because they are very serious and they affect half the uh, population in the country, sir. Okay, you are telling about some Niti Ayog and the. So, Niti Ayog that released the India's Innovation Index is 2.0. What type of the parameters were applied for the Innovation Index, for arriving the Innovation Index? I have read about this, sir, but I cannot recollect all the parameters. Okay. Then, you know, sir, computer science graduate, the yes, biometrics, sir. now that recently they are employing even for the criminals also. Don't you think that it is not violating the, uh, one of our fundamental rights, namely the right to privacy? Yes, sir. So this is a this is an argument that is currently mm -hmm. going on. Uh, on one way, we could use the biometrics for uh, efficient uh, management of our uh, uh, of our investigative agencies and to prosecute and uh, bring justice as soon as possible. So what we need is that to uh, get rid of the privacy issue because of the collection of the sensitive information of ex criminals. Say they are current criminals, but does not mean they will be criminals in the future also, sir. So we just need a right to forget. Right to forget. forget. The system can hold the biometrics of the accused or the criminal till his prosecution or till his uh, imprisonment gets over. But once he is led back into the society, mm -hmm. the, he is supposed to be a reformed person. So retaining the uh, sensitive information of the reformed person in criminal database is will be a violation of his right to privacy. So because of that, we need a right to forget wherein these people can ask the government or ask the system uh, to to erase their information after the purpose gets over. Okay. Uh, you appeared last week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You appeared last week. What questions were discussed? Uh, with respect to me, sir. Uh, so you asked me about death sentence, sir. Okay. Uh, then we spoke about uh, insurance schemes, sir, again. Uh, then from insurance scheme, we went on to speak about... Uh, Your voice is going down. Little bit louder. Okay. 
So from insurance scheme, we will move on to how crop insurance is working for farmers, why okay. people are not able to register for the schemes. So that will be the questions we handle. Sir. Yes. What happened in the past seven days? Can you cite three, four major developments in the past one week? State level, state level, international level. Yes, sir. So on the state level, the uh, most current advancement is, is about the 10.5% uh, reservation that is being struck down by the Supreme Court. Uh, on a national level, now we are facing a choice between buying discounted uh, oil from Russia or uh, ha or going in uh, going in tandem with the West sanctions on Russia. Uh, then, from a neighborhood point of view, we are facing uh, the uh, Sri Lankan uh, economic crisis could evolve into a refugee crisis for India. Uh, for which the uh, Chief Minister has uh, gone to meet the Prime Minister to uh, discuss about the issue. One more thing uh, happened with your favorite subject, transport. Yes, sir. What happened? The last one week. Uh, I do not know what, what happened. to the person? Last week when we were discussing, we had a gentleman uh, transport minister. Now we have a new transport minister in the state. This all happened the past some eight days. Okay, sir. I, I, I you know that who is the new transport minister of the state? No, I do not know, sir. I, I was not aware of this. Okay, it was changed. Last week, a, a different person, now another gentleman was there. Okay. okay. The another major development in the past one week was the dire warning by the US Deputy National Secretary of the Sir. What was the issue? Why was the warning in India? It was on page one of major newspapers and the Hindu English carried it as a page one story yesterday. So, uh, so this is regarding the Ukraine uh, war crisis, sir. Okay. And the West is trying to put up a united front in cornering Russia through economic sanctions. Mm. Uh, the West is expecting India to join it, uh, join uh, them in the uh, in this economic sanctions. Mm. But India's self-interest is in uh, is is not in tandem with what the West wants. So because of that, we are having a choice of what to do to preserve our. No, no. What was the specific? That I, mm. we all know. My question is very much specific. The visiting deputy's national secretary advisor was yes. of Indian origin, is Dalip Singh. Yes. Yes. He has openly warned, as a brazen warning to. Yes, sir. They India. said we would have and specific on what specific issue has warned India. Uh, I I do not know, sir. He has warned that not to buy, not only to buy uh, Russian oil, mm -hmm. but he has warned that. India should not trade in ruble with Rupi Russia. Rupi ruble. Rupi ruble. Rupi ruble. So that's the specific. And he has also warned that anyone who tries to undermine the hegemony of US dollar, international economics, international trade, will have to pay a price for it. Yes. Sir. So this is a specific warning, yes. Sarah was asking you about uh, Parliament enacting laws. And the courts striking down. Yes, sir. In broader sense, uh, how will we discuss this subject? What is it? What is basic structure doctrine? And the basic structure is not uh, not defined explicitly, sir. The basic structure, I see it as the letter and spirit of the constitution. As long as we don't violate the articles in the constitution and the spirit with which the articles were made. No, his question was. Uh, Sarah's question was very specific. Yes, sir. There were 542 members, 544 members, elected representatives. They pass a law. Yes, sir. They pass a bill, it subsequently becomes a law. Yes, sir. Which was challenged by one people or a group of people, and the matter goes to the court. Yes, sir. By court of Supreme Court, let us take a Supreme Court. There are five judges. Or the maximum case of 13 judges. They strike down the law. Class by class, they strike down the law. Yes, sir. Now his question was, how it is correct when people's representatives who are empowered to make law, tenant law, when they make a law, how could the unelected members, to put it bluntly, 10 or 12 or 13, how can they strike down the that law? No, okay, yes, That's the basic. That's the basis of his question. In which case did he refer to? Uh, 
de viselkedésre. Viselkedésre. De készül, de kort készülten. ಸೋಷಿಯಲ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಾಕ್ಟ್ and that contract is what is our constitution so with that we have specific roles and responsibilities in that way the supreme court is seen as the custodian of the constitution the social contract with which this country was made uh, so the public representative uh, as the legislators of this country will reflect the people's will through their uh, bills acts and other legislative procedures so the people's will of that current time could be reflected in the legislature but if it goes against the document that binds this country in a social contract the supreme court has the uh, authority or has the discretion to evaluate this particular uh, act or bill with respect to the provisions given in the constitution in connecting with this issue with the keshwananda bharati case yes sir how will you justify it yes we can put it very simply uh, i i am not getting the question sir keshwananda bharati case yes sir This, this was discussed by the Keshwan and the Keshwan and the Keshwan and the Keshwan and the basic structure doctrine was elaborately discussed. Yes sir. In connection with SAR's question, you could have answered it very simply. Uh, it, it is still not uh, striking no, me sir. The uh, basic structure can't be tinkered with. Whatever yes, may be uh, the parliament's brutal majority. Yes sir. Uh, Lok Sabha plus Rajya Sabha, it will come around 800 plus numbers. But still they can't tinker with the basic structure. Yes sir oh, I I understand sir I could that's the uh, basis thing okay. how will you deal with the solar wastage sir was asking about e wastage now the government has come out with solar wastage also actually there is also an e waste yes yeah, that comes under it. yes that is back with lithium nitrate now this the special you know that the, the, just a week back the government has formulated a policy to deal with solar wastage have you heard about it uh, no sir Russian, Russian, Russian. Thank you. Thank you. The best. Thank you. Sir. Okay. 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 Okay.
uh, as far as i know i don't i don't think we have started the uh, census process of collecting the data on caste lines sir it is still in conceptualization phase okay great um and what you opinion about it who we need to collect it or not so this country needs a new discussion on how the caste system and the reservation issue is being spoken of sir it's been 75 years the system has worked in some way but the system has not helped the uh, people in of direst need so there ha we have created creamy sections within every community so that is a valid fact that this country is facing right now so what i would see in the future what i would like to see in the future is that sir we need a renewed conversation on reservation and caste itself so that the benefits that are being provided goes to the people in need and not to the creamy sections of every community sir okay so i uh, so you are in favor of economic uh, i mean reservation basis economic criteria yes sir we also need that because in 75 years we could we would be seeing close to two or three generations in a single family that may have benefited from reservation so the root cause of why we needed reservation in the first place is still existing the access affordability quality of services and amenities that we provide to all people in this country is still not equal so the system itself cannot be removed but at least the system can be reformed so that the creamy sections are no longer eligible for these extra benefits sir. so can you elaborate it more are you saying we need to have caste you need to have class only or caste plus class it has always been caste plus class in this country sir we have a caste class continuum and the supreme court has also said that we have to look at both economic and educational and social backwardness so all these uh, are required before <laughs> the uh, before we take a decision on reservation reforming of reservation or any other new system to replace reservation itself okay thank you um i mean there is there is this buzz around anti defection law uh, and a few parliamentarians or even legislative uh, you know the uh, mlas have actually said that or they have gone on to say that you know the anti defection law can be a curse uh, to the legislators duty towards his or her constituency people uh, how what do you think they are referring to and uh, what do you think are the steps to curtail if needed Uh, of the anti-defection law excesses yes sir so this is a, a very complicated issue uh, the law itself was brought in to uh, minimize horse trading between political parties to form governments uh, so the nature of our political system the parliamentary system envisions that every parliamentarian uh, takes up the cause of his or her constituency so the constituency needs a supreme but in the party politics multi party system Uh, we have more party allegiance than uh, we have more party allegiance than what you would expect from a parliamentarian to safeguard the interests of his constituency of the, or of his state so because of this the anti defection law is giving more power to the political party the chief whip so that the party's decisions becomes the parliamentarian's decisions the collective decisions of the parliamentarians so this is where we see the issue with the current uh, system with the anti defection law so this is now uh, leading us to a problem of where the parties high command would have a say on every matter and the individual parliamentarian is reduced to being a rubber stamp with respect to issues that are decided by the high command of every party this is this is what i see so what are the steps i mean to avoid to cut any excesses are there any steps that are proposed do you see anything have you come across anything no sir i am i am not seen any uh, solutions for this problem sir okay no problem so can you talk about or uh, give me an example um with how blockchain is solving a real world problem uh, any any example it can be small big uh, yes sir uh, so uh, so what blockchain technology gives us is the public ledger concept which means it cannot be tinkered with therefore there is transparency and uh, so that there is transparency and nobody can uh, uh, do shady business with the public ledger so where i see the most important application of blockchain is uh, in uh, land management managing land title records 
records when uh, when any sale that is happening is recorded in a blockchain system and on the public ledger now we have a transparent record that cannot be tinkered with and is publicly available for everyone to see we can minimize the number of uh, land disputes and title disputes that has emerged that is currently pending in the courts across the nations this is one solution that can uh, revamp how uh, land titles are being uh, managed in the country sir. Do you think by that way we can provide a conclusive title? If we yeah. can resolve the current issues that are already mm. existing in the title, sir, we can prevent any of the future issues that will come. The current issues need to be resolved uh, physically by uh, by humans. Mm. But once that is done, once we have a compliant okay. system in place, it will work, sir. Is the National Land Board Modernization Program then looking at this, or traveling and moving in this direction? I am not aware of it, sir. I am not aware, yes, sir. Okay, no problem. Um, I mean, you actually spoke about when the Honorable Member before he was asking you about why engineers in civil services. You stopped halfway when you said there needs to be a humanities touch to the engineers. What do you mean by that? Uh, sir, the curriculum in technological schools like IITs and NITs. Though we have humanities course with us, uh, it's not enough, sir. So we are ex we are expected to get the technical aspect of how the uh, system works in in our respective fields, but there has to be a humane touch so that the machines that we make, the products that we make, are uh, are really delivering what we want to deliver to the end user. So the humane touch is what I see missing in the curriculum itself, sir, and that is why I said engineers with their technological progress if given with the humanities background, could be able to design systems that are more people friendly and that are more useful to the society. Sir. All right. Okay. Uh, you actually mentioned admission consulting in your EAS. Yes. Uh, what are the issues that you generally see amongst your juniors or you know students that you have helped so far? Uh, sir, so one problem that is plaguing higher education admission in our country is we work on cut-off marks instead of interest of the course. So every course is being pegged on a uh, ranking list and based on the cut-off you choose the highest course that you can get. So the list itself changes based on the parameters you use but there is a standard template that the majority of people follow. For example, if you take uh, for uh, IITs, the first course, course that gets filled up is computer science and engineering because of so many reasons. So this is the uh, problem that I am facing with the juniors. So when I see this and they come into the course, now they do not uh, have passion for the subject. Now they want to shift. So when they want to shift, that is where they realize what their true passion is. And in that part, I try to help them figure out the ways that they have so that they can move towards their true passion. Sir. Got it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Feedback. Uh, this one. When I was asking about with reference to this, when so this is striking down by one single judge, Sarah was also saying that cash one on the Bali case. In addition to that, if you get an opportunity to read about the Gualakna case, AK Gowalan case, uh, Nanaka Dhani case, all these things, uh, how far that the constitution is supreme, then this one. Okay? Yes. Number one. And secondly, uh, with reference to the uh, humanness, uh, humanity, this and that, uh, I think that is that an engineer definitely will be an inventing that engine or how it has to be functioned this way. But human touch means you could have refined your language or you could have refined your answer in such a way. This is more yeah, uh, uh, well, that you that the engineers must start more value oriented subject rather than this type of a material oriented. So the material oriented must be blended with the value oriented. So that type of that answer will be a better one. And similarly that e-waste management, you have to learn how this e-waste, buyback is the only thing, but being a technical graduate, you must say that how technologically this waste are disposed. In fact, Sar was also asking about the solar waste. It is actually the solar cells or the solar panel. It is nothing but a, again, the lithium battery only. So how this battery can be disposed effectively from the environment technologically, okay? yes. that one. And similarly for the uh, cyber law, it is the major jurisdictional issue that you have to 
uh, say about that one. It is not that with a computer science background and electronics background, you can be able to identify the crime, the criminal, where he is. And in the course of your language also, you are saying parliamentarian, parliamentarian, parliamentarian. It is they are only the parliament members. Parliament members are different from parliamentarians. Now, in the present day context, most of them are not the parliamentarians. <laughs> they are only the parliament members only. Okay? So, parliamentarian means it is somewhat a very high status is given. So, I think that in every answer you are started explaining more elaboratively. So, that will lead to the other subsequent questions also. You try to restrict that answer as much as possible in a less one. Yes. Barring that, you are having the knowledge. But only thing is, knowledge and exposed to the knowledge of the knowledge of the knowledge of the knowledge of the the constitution of the constitution is the supreme law, supreme uh, organic document of the country. If any law which is made by the parliament when it is not falling within the ambit and scope of the constitution and if it affects the fundamental right of any citizen then the constitution guarantees the citizens to approach the highest judiciary by way of filing the petition and the constitutional body namely the supreme court has given that constitutional right to strike down how far to the extent it has uh, it, it has overstepped its limitation or affected the fundamental right. Okay? Yes. So, that's why you have to elaborate on it and restrict on it. The bar is that you are having, what is this one, a good amount of the knowledge. When is your interview? Uh, April 27th. Definitely, one more month is there. And then, all the members in Parmeni, you work around the party. If I ask the question, you are only seeing me. And again, Kuncho and the என்ன <laughs> 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 Speaking, you have to improve. It seems as if you have mocked up everything and that's what you are saying. Okay, give uh, a feeling of thinking. Yes. Okay, it is, it is, it is a, it, any discussion is participatory. You, from your side, it doesn't look like being participatory. Okay, yes. so uh, be slow in your speech and higher in your pitch, which yes. I have several times told you. Okay, and give an impression that you are thinking and answering. Yes, sir. That is not coming out of what you are, how you are saying. What you are saying is all right, but how you are saying, okay. So, uh, you are just going like an express. As if you know the answer and uh, go on uh, uh, to talking, okay. Yes, sir. So, sir, take care of this aspect. Yes, sir. Now, this, uh, regarding this judicial review, uh, have a very clear picture. Judicial review means the legal system has got many tires, okay. So the lower tire can how it the upper tire. Yes. The highest is the constitution. Now the constitution cannot be violated by positive enactment of a legislature. Okay. Yes. Sir. So <coughs> that's the last thing. So now in case of the Bhakti case, this basic structure doctrine says there is still something 
uh, more important in the constitution itself. So they created another class which even the parliament cannot take away by constitutional amendment. Yes, sir. Law cannot take it, but a constitutional amendment also by that, by that also parliament cannot take it. The basic structure, the parliament cannot amend the constitution to destroy the basic structure of the, yes. of, the, of, the, of, the, of the constitution. Okay, so it also restricts the power of amendment of the parliament. Yes. Okay, and this one judge versus uh, the parliament, this case came in Gurukhnath case. In Gurukhnath case, 11 judges were there. Six judges said parliament has got no power to amend the constitution. Five judges said it has no fundamental rights. It, 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 it has the power. So, Mrs. Gandhi at that time said, so one judge, six minus five, so one judge is more important than the entire parliament, entire nation. So, that debate came at that time. Okay. So, uh, be very clear about it. So, yes. the basic structure doctrine says there are certain parts of the constitution, like some assumptions of the constitution which cannot be taken away by even constitutional amendment, even. like federalism, yes. like, uh, like uh, secularism, okay, rule of law, democracy, okay, so they cannot be taken away by constitutional amendment also, yes. even though parliament has got the power to amend the constitution. So, basic structure cannot be touched. Yes. Okay. About the general convention which is being discussed, I am not discussing now because it's a lot, it takes a longer time. There's about four chapters, not four parts. So look into those four parts. In foreign service, you know, I didn't ask you anything on, on, ex, on external affairs. So, but you look to those things well because yes, uh, this Ukraine crisis is very important. Yes, sir. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. No, no, another member is there. Uh, he will give his, uh, uh, please, be messy. Yes, 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 sir. Hi, Shiva. Uh, Shiva, there, there are a couple of things. One, I mean, on the questions that I've asked you, which is uh, anti defection law, there are like very interesting cases, man. There is the uh, uh, Kyoto Bolohan case. There are actually a lot of cases that have given out uh, judgments. Recently, there's a case in Manipur, High Court, uh, Reba Marian case. I mean, there are a whole bunch of cases that you might want to look at. To, uh, in terms of how Supreme Court is trying to talk about uh, defection laws, limited, uh, you know, power or limiting uh, the anti defection law scope to ensure that, you know, parliamentarians or the MLAs are able to try and, uh, you know, exercise their right. Uh, in so far, I think there are only three places where the Supreme Court, uh, where the court is trying to tell that, you know, anti defection law needs to be implemented. So you might want to read about that. But uh, other than that, I think mean one, last, one last point is um, stay clear of extreme statements. For instance, and the, the reservation question that I was asking you was I took it in the data direction so that uh, so that because you were very articulate in your answer, so I thought okay, let me engage you on that point. But when in your course you again skip to a couple of points where you know um, it's a large fact that you've created previous sessions. Uh, well, it is useful to say such lines in a, in a research paper because you will have time to back yourself up with data. Uh, if there is any for that matter. Uh, because with these statements, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's always a this or that, right? Because if you actually look at one side of data, you would realize that the existing promise of even 15, 7, and 27 percentage has not been implemented fully. So there are these troubles that you might put yourself in. Uh, so you might as well sort of stay clear of such extreme lines um, and then, you know, focus on what you see uh, or what, what one would call as an iterative policy making. So it was very good that you said we needed a renewed conversation on task. Um, but then uh, again to sort of slip to uh, a very categorical statement is again problematic because then that is not a conversation, right? Um, and it has always been social and educational backwardness so far. Uh, and the EWS cases continue with subjects, so we still don't know. Yes, sir. Um, so it's useful to sort of you know keep uh, an idea of these uh, debates, and then but otherwise stay abreast of current affairs. Uh, and I wish you good luck. Man. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chairman. Sir. Okay. So you take the constitution. Sir, I didn't. Schedule 10 of the constitution, anti defection. Schedule 10 of the constitution. Yes. Sir. You see that? Yes, sir. Then the schedule.
competency. What are eleventh and twelfth? Eleventh is for uh, panchayats and twelfth is for municipalities. Yes. So after ninth, ninth was the first amendment. Yes. The Jamdari Abolition Acts. Okay. All these two, two, three hundred laws are there. Then the tenth, then eleventh and twelfth. Okay. Thank you, sir.